you know, early damage, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. It's a much better look though from G2IG, and I'm excited to see how Whisper does utilize the Bristleback. Now let's see what it can do with it. Let's see what it can do. As I said, they put a lot of power behind it, giving it that, uh, that luxury of the fifth and final pick. Let's see if uh, indeed Whisper's going to be able to make some magic happen. And overall as well, with the last pick from uh, G2IG, I have nothing to say in that mid position. G you imagine in this sort of matchup, last game we obviously saw on the tiny, he had a bit of a tough time against BZM. As a Cottle, right, it sh you should be trading farm. You're not going to be falling behind at least, right, with this hero. No, it's the, <laughs> it's the hero that even if you have... A, I mean, you, you, you never really have a bad lane on this hero. Unless you're playing into, let's say, like some Conquer plus one, where you have that lockdown... So maybe nature's profit teleport. You always have a good lane. It's more on the player to have efficiency in the jungle, making the snacks while pushing out mid. And um, yeah, should easily be top three net worth in uh, for, for at least the first 20 minutes. Unless the game goes real south in some mid game stuff, but yeah. Let's see if the team's able to get a grab here around the bouncy rooms. Whisper. Yeah, that's got Ari with him. I'm uh, definitely happy to trade into Money and Xnova, and yeah, Money and Xnova don't want to be battling that right now. So we'll be the three bounty runes going the way of OG to start this off. I see him in top lane. I feel this uh, should be not too bad, right, for Tomato. Yeah, Seb should be able to do a fair bit right, keeping the pressure off. Mm, yeah, I think Phoenix is one of the better heroes, especially against these melee heroes. You just throw down some some fire spirit and you're good to go. I think it depends on how you set up the first wave or two. If Naga Siren can you know, play with the Phoenix, maybe get a couple right clicks off, then suddenly they're always on the half HP and yeah, you see Seb throwing down blood grenades and spirits and he's really making sure that hoodwink isn't able to you know, step foot in the lane early on yeah very favorable level one sort of trade of damage there yeah. keeping the illusions as well onto baboka making sure that he doesn't have an easy time entering into the lane and uh, yeah bottom i mean the, the question is bottom do we have a side sort of present kill threat you know is the because I, I feel this is a lane where both cores they could be set up in positions where they're going to try and push forward for the kill and maybe one of them's not going to quite get it and is going to regret their aggressive moves. Yeah, I think that's you know a perfect way to look at this bot lane at any minute. Slark could go for the, the pounce to try and go for a half HP Whisper. On the flip side, X Nova could step up and try and get a scatter blast off and suddenly die himself, right? And I think both lines, uh, like, sorry, sides are looking for level two, level three. Ooh, if yeah, Aaron was to hit close. Though. Yeah. You've got to be careful. It's always so tempting as a Slark to just keep punching, building up those essence shifts, but you really have to respect not only the stacking up of the quills, but of course the, the eventual early damage that Ari can follow up in burst. So you just got to get not too trigger happy as this Slark. It's very easy to. I'll see if Mone can keep his cool. Was able to play last game's lane pretty safely and on his life stealer, and nearly was able to do enough to carry the team. And also, when you have these type of matchups where it is so volatile, so back and forth, that's where mid Cottle will be able to maybe even break open from the game, right? Like, if he gets an early six, that bonus move speed from his ultimate, he TPs to the bot lane with that solar bind, with an urn charge. He can now suddenly kill off the Bristol, and everything that was talking about how you know, fair and balanced it is in bot lane with no, no one really dying, you could just offset that greatly. So, I am looking at Cottle to get those levels instead. He does have the dive to, to disengage in the top lane, but you know, much I'd say a much nicer start in regards to the you no know, death, everyone's chill. Of course Flark is I think the core who's really missing out right now of everyone. Yeah, he's surviving bot lane, but he's not CSing as nicely as everyone else, as he just about hits the ten CS now at the three minute mark. Trying to step up and trade, but just always takes so much damage in return. I'm sure you build up these stick charges, but early on, a pretty squishy little fishy. Dire structures. 
especially with the level 2 squirrels now and whisper. Not easy to step up to the creeps at all for Monet. Hey. Mid lane. Pretty much going as expected. BZM getting a slight a few more uh, denies in on the case, but overall, farm's going to be very even between these two. Yeah, it's one of the uh, like DK into Coral. DK can sometimes get some additional denies and stuff, but yeah, it's even farm all around. I am surprised that we haven't seen a, a kill yet. Like the fact that this bot lane, there's so much expectation for, for death. I think it's top though. It's the only one who should, in theory, be dying is uh, Phoenix, right? Like, if Seb gets a little bit too uh, over-aggressive with his Fire Spirits, if he tries to dive away but gets x marked, then it could be see Phoenix dying, but they are going on to block in the bot lane. I mean, he is, he, so far, he's, he's really playing it as, as safe as he needs to, Monet. He is making sure that he doesn't get punished for, for trying to push it too much down here. So some good reserved Slark play so far. I'm very much aware of how easy it is for him to die down here, so... Making sure he does not give OG that chance to go for him. Now five minutes in, yet to see the first blood. Probably still going to be a fair bit of time until we do see it with sort of how safely RG is playing bottom on. I don't know. I mean, would you say there's a lane that's most likely to see it? I mean, Seb's going to... He's going to try and make it happen here with his move thrown down towards the bottom. See if maybe now this additional presence can help push them in. But they are going to be able to match this. It's actually going to be the nothing to coming, stay yeah. TPing down here. And they're going to try and go for Ari. And the Cenobi has an avalanche, will be able to throw it out, the dark pact and the pounce is there. IG get the job done. A turn over towards Monet. Have another dark pact in a second. Whispers in on top of him, the spirits and dive come out from Seb. It's not enough damage. Monet's able to step back underneath the tower, he'll survive. IG, this time this game too. They're coming in with a, a smoother early game move. This last game they did struggle against the pressure OG was putting on. This time they... They calculate it perfectly. They bring in the right amount of numbers, they get the kill, they get out, and they lose nothing in return. Yeah, and it's all down to this Keeper of the Light. He hits the level 6, and he sees the fact that they're just stepped up a little bit further down the lane, it allows him to chase him down, and of course, Solar Bind is so good in these moments, especially when you have any cheap damage to throw with you, some Scatter Blast or something, it really helps out. And you know, BZM, he tries to mirror the rotation, but yeah, a DK isn't going to be able to do as much damage as the Cuttle at this stage of the game. And yeah, I look to see if G2IG can continue this style of play. Of course, when you are the one reacting to aggression, then suddenly you don't have the TPs available. And because of all this bot stuff, now Tomato is getting pushed back deep into the jungle. The top tier one tower is getting pressure. And yeah, for sure they are feeling a, a lot better in this game. Yeah. He's also able to grab the uh, Wisdom Rune. Ooh. He might get... Nah, he's going to be seen. Yeah, they see him. Oh. I mean, Ari's obviously going to hold the avalanche. So, uh, X Nova's got no chance of TPing out. The distraction, though, has given space for JT to take out Seb. So, whilst both teams will lose supports, and in fact, oh, X Nova's even able to get the deny to the neutral creeps. So, he's going to be very happy with that. Gets the wisdom rune, wastes the time of the two of them, doesn't even give up the kill. Couldn't be going any better for IG right now. They're having a hot start. He went to contest Wisdom Room with only a stick in his inventory, but luckily it was a 10 stick. And of course, JT is looking to go for that rapier rush as we see every single time with the offlane Kunkka in China. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> if only. Come if on, only. Don't let us down. You, he saw a lot, you know, last game he was like, oh, i got to carry these games pretty hard. So he's ready to do it even harder here with the rapier rush. We can Imagine if he just forgot for like 15 minutes somehow and then just quick bought. Oh. God damn, guys. 2 0 at uh, uh, JT with the quick tower that he was able to take top and the kill he picks up. I mean, he's going to pretty much have this whole corner of the map to himself, I feel. OG, they're going to focus their efforts over towards the mid potentially, but they've been spotted out. X Nova's in on the high ground, jumps in with a cookie on towards BZM. 
their vessel. Gonna try and set up onto to the DK. They'll get the bushwhack off onto him. He'll turn, but a huge burst coming out with the Illumina. I mean, BZM, he'll try and bring that X Nova with him. He, he will take out X Nova, but of course, not before BZM himself falls. As G2YG, they get the kill. And uh, just a completely different story in the outcome of the mids this time around in game two compared to game one. Nothing to say, having so much more of a present. Ari tries to pick up a bit of farm under the tower, but nothing to say, and Boboka, they're going to be ready to play around with him. It's another kill for the two of them to pick up. They'll continue this pressure on tier one tower, and yet JT with a rotation down bottom drops the combo onto Whisper. That's going to be another plus one to the permanent Aji here for Mone. G2IG, they're hitting back hard in this game too. Yeah, I, just, I love the way that they're moving around the map right now, especially just enabling this Keeper of the Light. You see heroes, you have the Vessel, there's so much tankiness in OG, but there's no Dispel, so the heroes are going to be dropping. The Boca misses his entire spell. Combination. JT tried to go for the Torrent, does mean he's a little short on the mana for the X mark, so didn't have the control for uh, for Seb. So Seb, he'll live to see another day. Doesn't mean that JT's got the mana to set up maybe onto BZM, but it's a hard hero to go for beyond the tier one tower. BZM at full HP, they won't push for more. I'm back to pushing out the lanes. Any minute that G2IG kind of lose focus on the side lanes, that's when heroes like Naga, Snyder, and Bristleback, they are very efficient. Bristol can farm Ancient Stacks, Naga, Snyder can farm the entire jungle in one wave, and they're going on to BZM again. I mean, the same they're pretty much getting him. The Bushwhack's going to be there as long, along with the Spirit Vest, and the final blast takes him out. They that try the with the egg, but yep. the three heroes are able to focus it out, get the kill, they're going to get Ari as well. It, it really is. So the, the tables have been turned from game one to game two. It's OG this game game round with their draft that just can't seem to turn up these skirmishes against G2IG. Even with sort of the six being hit on Seb. And G2IG, they have the, the tools to take the egg down. Picking up these three kills. Keeping the pressure on onto mid. Nothing to say. He's hitting all those timings. Spirit Vessel into bots. It's done here. Ten minutes in. It, it boils down to the, the damage that they can bring, right? Like, one side's got Keeper Light Snapfire with the control of a Kunker. And what does OG really have right now? It, it's nothing, right? Every hero kind of always leans on someone else, right? Like, Bristol wants someone to help facilitate the fight to get calls off. Tiny wants to have a toss for someone else to get the kill. DK wants to stun for someone else to get the kill. Naga Siren, she doesn't want to kill anything, right? Like, the entirety of OG are feeling the repercussions of their draft because they haven't tried shutting down this Keeper of Light. No, it's on G2IG to continue just progressing the game how they want to, and maybe nothing to say was going to go for a Dago. He just queued it up. Sometimes on the uh, mid That's a purchase. Yeah, we see... Ah, he's not going for it. That's a shame. He keeps changing it, but like normally for mid it's like Aether Lens or E-Blade or Ags, sometimes Orchid. Dagon kind of lost uh, kind of respect a little bit from the mid coddles. Of course, Nine was the one to popularize it all the way uh, back in the day, but excited to see the future of where this coddle does land because for OG, they're just going to be farming. I mean, JT, the, the dream is still real. I imagine he's just going to, he's just going to go probably Ooh. Radiance, right? With this build up. <laughs> you say that though. I mean, there's no way. He's not buying Rapier. No. I he's just, he's, us, it's just a Radiant. Oh, See, right? No. There we man. go. It has Disappointment has kicked in. <laughs> yeah. There was a little bit of hope. It is JT, 1%. you never know. But it's going to be this uh, straight Radiance on him. And of course, with all the space that he's had in this corner of the map, he's going to have a very, very good timing on it. And uh, yeah, Radi Radiance is a, it's a solid item on Kunker. Great against the Naga Siren. And uh, did get buffed. So it always feels good to buy a. Uh, no, people would always find reasons to buy Radiance anyway. I think, if anything, we're probably going to see even more of it in professional games now on some of these heroes uh, with that, mm -hmm. that additional bit of a buff to the evasion. That's Whisper. He's been caught. A beautiful sharp shot coming in to break him. Continuing to get these kills. The towers as well. This tier one on the bottom lane is not going to stand a chance. G2IG there really taking over the map. I mean, we'll, we'll see, you know, this game from OG's perspective. How do they look to play this one out from now? As they are going to be behind. They're going to smoke up. Maybe see if they can get something done with the ultimates once again. Seb's got the supernova ready to drop. Um, DK it's going to be down been. to what BZM can do. He's got the setup on a X Nova. They're going to focus the snap first. The bushwhack comes out on towards BZM. 
Won't save X Nova. X Nova goes down. Seb is getting focused by Mone. He'll pop the supernova, but Mone, he's able to just focus it, take it out with very, very easily, and maybe we get more. It looks towards BZM. BZM's able to get off another Dragon Tail. Mone still wants to go forward before him. Can he finish BZM off? He can't. BZM will live. Wisp is able to block the sharpshoot that was kind of going the way of BZM. So uh, this time, OG, despite the egg not being successful, it still kind of does what it needed to do. You know, takes the focus away from everybody else and means that at the end of the fight, it is going to be Mone that's losing his life. No, no, it's all because Keeper like he TP'd to the top lane. So his TP was on cooldown. OG saw him pushing out the waves and it was like, guys, this is the best chance to fight. Even if we drop some numbers here, we know there isn't going to be you know, the, the main reason we're losing the fight present. So, yeah, they, they do get a couple kills in return, but... I think if you're due to IG, you need to be thinking just a little bit more about can the Kuttle turn up? If he can turn up, go for any fight you can. If he can't turn up, respect it. Give OG 10 seconds of breathing, but just make sure that this Keeper of Light is always present. Because if not, you are going to just give away potentially you know, a couple kills that you really should never be giving away. They're going to try with a the combo. They're going to set it up here. On to Ari. And it's sure to be enough. Especially with the Vessel's charge thrown down. Nothing to say, able to pick up another kill. We saw nothing to say as well. He was considering a lot of different items. As you said earlier, we had him sort of going for the Dagon, then he had Ether Lens queued up, and then he had Blink queued up. Uh, he's now settled for the Force stuff. Uh, what, what do you think sort of his, his thought process was when it came down to, to what he buys now? What, why do you think he's settled on the Force for the next time? I think OG focuses on killing in a single moment, right? Like the Avatos or the DK stun or even like the internet. So one four stuff disjoints that. Tiny when he blinks in, he can't blink again, right? DK can't blink again. So I think that if you can just disjoint that, that one moment OG has, their lack of damage plus the lack of control, it could hurt. Oh, good jump onto Mone, but maybe not good enough. He's able to get the dark pact and the shadow dance into play, so he's out. Kiss is coming to an end, X Nova. Still got a cookie to play with, but he's been caught by the root. He'll try and jump out of the side, but Whispers in on top of him, OG. Take him out. Got the X mark from JT. He's looking to potentially turn. Still no quote here for 15 seconds. And indeed, they've found their way to the back line. Tomato, Ari, and BZM ignoring the front line of the fight. They go straight for nothing to say. They take him out. Tomato's the one to be able to get the killing blow on that as well. So a good amount of cash being infused into towards the Naga Siren. So if they can get more from this, maybe Ari. He's trying to hide. And they've found it. So G2IG. They will be able to get kills in return. But uh, from OG's point of view, not a bad fight for Tomato to turn up to take that big kill on the Keeper of the Light and keep himself ahead of the game. Top of the board right now. Yeah, and if you look at the top side of the Radiant Triangle, right, that Observer placed by OG was actually placed by Tomato. So I believe that scouted out Kotal as he moved to the, kind of the north side of this mid fight. So because of Tomato placing his own ward, it allowed him to also then make the wraparound play with the Song to kill the Kotal. So yeah, nice moves there from Tomato and... That's what you uh, need to see uh, from OG, right? Just a little bit more, you know, poke for the kills that you can get, but don't try and overplay your hand right now because G2IG, they are very scary if they're in position, but positioning has not been their friend for the last couple of, uh, last couple of engagements, right? Kotal top with no TP, Kotal getting picked off by Song. Like they need to enable each other, and right now they're not really doing it. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Radiant structures are fortified. See if they can set anything up from this position here. Like Tenova's got his eyes on Ari. I mean, he said Ari's got his eyes on him. Max Nova throws out the scatter blast over towards the mid Mone. He's going to get the jump onto Tomato. Good shot here as well with the sharpshooter. And healing him up a bit with the stunray, but it's not enough to save him. Tomato getting caught in the river. Seb, he's going for the TP out. Mone tries to make a guess for it with the pounce, but will be off the mark. So Seb's able to escape. Up towards the top, though, JT, he's got the catch on a whisper. The kisses are coming in. They easily have the damage to take out this bristle back. Oh, Mone trying to go into BCM. He misses the pounce, though. And no more stuns. This game is very delicate, though, for OG. It is. At any minute, if they miss position, there is so much kill threat for G2IG. But if they have, like, perfect position and if they read the map, then they can make it so hard for G2IG to find these kills. And, yeah, unfortunately there for Tomato, he does make a great play top to kill Coddle, but then missteps too far into the river and, yeah, and turns it back around. 
And it does feel that so far, at least, we're, we're yet to really sort of see the strength right of this last pick, Bristle. You know, Whispers, you know, one, four, and one. He's been able to get the Ags online, but as we saw in that last case, they can kite him out and they can kill him. Oh, an Ari. It's going to get tripped up here. Tries to TP out, but the Bushwhack's in play from Baboka. 16 to 5 now for G2IG. Yeah, for Ari, he went. Zero deaths in the previous game to now six in this game. You can you can see the difference. Like his hoodwink is exceptional, playing on the, the fringes of vision, but you put him on a melee here and then of course he's gonna naturally be in slightly more vulnerable positions. He will there will be opportunities to kill him and yeah, they're they're feeling it this time around. They're, they don't have this like constant threat from the four position. Blink dagger two hundred gold away for Tiny. Orchid now complete on Naga. So for OG at least, they do have some items coming out. They have initiation on Tiny, they have some additional control from Naga Siren. And there isn't anything really to stop that from G2IG. There's no BKBs yet, there's no Dispel, so no Disperser on Slark. There's a potentially a good chance for OG to smoke up and maybe... I mean, they're looking for Tomato. Well, Tomato's gonna try and look for them. He's gonna set up on towards X Nova. Oh, he just gets stunned by the neutral. He will still get the song off, but the X is there. As Tomato, he is gonna be patient, wait for the X to finish before he TPs out, and it's enough time for him to play his way out of there. So keeping his composure and a very good escape there, despite the fact uh, that even the neutrals were turning against him there. <laughs> These plays are... So, so high risk, right? We saw it in the previous game as well, right? When he went for that bottom tier two play now in this game as well, he's like looking at a snap fire with the Orchid reveal, finds five and yeah, if there was any X mark, anything else, he would just be going down, but he does survive this time. 90 seconds now with no stone cooldown. He may walk into them once again, but it's just the two of them this time, just JT and Baboka. He scouts it out with the illusions, keeps himself safe in the tree line. Okay, so for OG, they've got Man Token now complete on DK. They've got Ivor Shot. Okay, they're going BKB on Bristol, but I guess for OG, they're probably waiting for the BKB on Bristol back. See what they can do here. They're trying to go for the play, but Ari and Whisper, they're here with a counter play. They come in with a combo. They're able to burst straight through Monet. Monet not even able to get the Shadow Dance off. X Nova drops the kisses, but BZM and Whisper, they're able to kite it out immediately and take him out as well. Maybe even look for more. JT and nothing to say. They're going to try and fight back at this, but they are outnumbered. They'll get the boat combo and the blast over towards Whisper. Whisper getting low, but nothing to say he's dead. Sure, they get Whisper, but it's cost them three heroes. JT potentially in trouble. The Dragon Tails Sunray. there into the damage from Seb Sunray. It's going to be four kills for OG Ari with a big comeback play there, picking up the triple kill after a bit of a slower start this game on his Tiny. I mean, that's, yeah, they, on top of, you know, that's the Blink Dagger reveal that you'd hope for. He's already well on his way towards his next item. This time around, it was G2IG sort of going in one by one, and OG just realizing they had the burst to jump and take out this Slark, take out Monet before he could get his ult off. Yeah, it's from the, the, the discipline of BZM, right? Not to instantly use the Dragon Tail, hold, wait to see that the Slark doesn't have any of the dark pack running and in doing so as well like nay he doesn't get the shadow dance off right like he fully gets comboed down but it all starts because of the bzm dragon tail into then the blink reveal from the tiny to fully break open that fight and yeah just one by one tping in I just you know seconds earlier I was talking about the, the fact that g2ig don't really have the tanky items yet like they're still looking for Kunkin to finish bkb which he has done they kind of want like to have the ags to be able to at least get in and out of the fight and until then they either need to play together or just farm and yeah OG they, they punished it it's like that is a very rare chance I feel like, like against Slark players you get like one of those deaths per game from a Slark player then he'll like reset and go wait a second they can kill me so I'm gonna make sure I'm you know, even deeper on the map or I'm even you know more backed up by my teammates and Time around, they're smoked up, both support with the Kunkka, Slark just showing in the lane. They are hungry for a kill, the game has somewhat stagnated for G2IG, which they're really does out. benefit OG. Yep, they're attack. starting to get the lead OG, Tomato, and he's already 2k ahead of anybody else in the game. Well, this Naga Siren's going to be huge, they Radiant's need to find him, they're trying to with that sweep, but Tomato's movement actually just 
just in time avoids them. There's kind of four heroes heading into that area of the map looking for him. Tomato with this aggressive farm now moving on to GCYG's half of the map. He's, he has avoided them for now. We'll see them start to swing back over for him, but he's into the trees. He's TP'd out. He's just a step ahead of them so far. Yeah, and this is always the, the worst feeling in the world when you're playing up against any of these map playing heroes. When you make a smoke move and don't find them, you just look back to your side of the river and go, wait a second, we now have to run all the way back to there to fix the lanes to then do it again. And there's only so many smokes that you can do. OG, though, they now smoke up themselves. The Naga Siren with the Tiny. Now the DK is under form. Let's see what they can get down here. Whisper. He's in with the BKB for just fully pressuring Monet. Really daring Mone to try and fight him. Mone has to put the Shadow Dance and now has to use the remainder of that time to run away. But Boca's going to get caught out on the side. He'll tick out to the damage here coming in from Seb. Over to the side. They might even get more here because nothing to say. He's trying to fight this, but the net comes out. JT is going to drop the combo onto the Illusions. The Egg is there. JT, he's trying to take this out, but he cannot take it out on his own. The Egg's going to go off successfully. Seb's burning through them all with the summer, and they have the Stone Lock down onto Monet. It's falling apart once again here for G2IG. As they just cannot take the team fights right now. OG, so far in this series today as a whole, definitely coming in with a better team plan coordination. Ari's back in with the jump. Catching out Baboka in the trees. He bought back for this. It's a die back on him. 7k lead now for OG. I mean, they're just looking like the hottest squad today here, T. Yeah, they are looking quite in form. Even after like a shaky start to the second game, you can feel that the, the team knows what they want to do to get back into it, right? Like collectively, it's like we want to get these items and then we can make moves. And the journey to get there, it's like you have freedom to make whatever you moves you want to make as long as it's not detrimental to giving up a Roshan or conceding multiple towers, right? And that freedom has allowed them to, to scale quite nicely. You've got the BKB on the Bristol. And I got, you've got to say for G2IG, they are just playing a little bit disjointed, right? Like their constant goes without everyone being ready. The fact that when they do go, they're just smoking into nothing. And yeah, for OG, they're in the right Radiant place at the right time, at the attack. important moment, right? Like sure, you might lose your lanes, but if you're able to make a clutch turnaround at 20 minutes, that is gonna really bring you back into the game and open it up for yourselves. Yeah, the way things are going, and just, just overall with the amount of AOE OG's lineup has, and combined with the, the lockdown, it's just not an easy game for an underfarm Slark, right? Monet slipping behind. He's now got the Agadims done. Uh, but at, at this stage, kind of the, the little bit of defensive potential the Mage Slayer provides, it doesn't seem like enough, right? It, 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 sure, the Ags is out, but he's still going to be so careful when trying to turn up to these fights. Top lane, BZM. He's in starting the fight over towards X Nova. Now turn around with the sharpshooter on towards BZM. JT's going to come in with a BKB and the full combo on towards this Dragon Knight. It will be enough to take him down. But IG, the rest of the squad, at least, they're having to split. They're having to back away. Seb pop the supernova. G2 IG, they've probably just got to continue to run. I don't know if they can get back in on this one. We'll see JTTP back over to the tier two. We'll see from the side, Mone. Maybe think if you can pick off anybody. He finds Ari watching from the high, high ground, and they do drag him back with the X mark. So Mone turning up will be enough to get him. They've got the song. But, uh, Tomato and Whisper, they'll use this to get out. Now they're outnumbered. Mone's got a couple of pounces. He's looking towards Whisper. Tomato trying to provide some sort of presence to give the space for Whisper to continue his retreat as Monet JT and nothing to say. Continue to chase. Another pounce. It's getting pretty deep now. It's Tomato. Still hovering around with the illusions, trying to push G2IG back and scare them away from chasing for more. And it won't work. G2IG, they won't continue the chase any longer. So the rest of OG get out of there. A little bit of a strike back from G2IG this time around, able to play the fight in a way that allows them to really limit the casualties they have. Yeah, oh, it helps that they start with the, the hood rate, right? They, they get the DK, and from there, it just gives them a little bit more freedom. Like, Naga Siren, so far, her game plan, she's only 1-1-4. One, one There's been 15 kills for OG, but Tomato, he's pushing out the lanes. He's yet to really make a big statement. Everything's kind of been around the DK or the Tiny or, you know, the Bristleback, right? And because of that, OG to OG, if, they, if they're in position, they, they, they can make the moves, right? So... Now JT actually has to BKB out. And uh, nothing to say, he did go back for the Dagon. 
Ah, just a little bit more burst damage. And make sure they can get those quick kills in the fight. And so the sustain is certainly there, especially for some, these tankier cores on OG. You don't take them out at the start, they're going to cause real problems in extended team fight situations. And I think that the, the fights are going to get a little bit harder for OG as the game progresses because Larko, so right now he's in his awkward era. He gets a BKB, he should in theory be relatively unkillable. Then he'll go back for Disperser and he'll be a big threat. Tomato. During this Aegis, yep. He tries to lead in on this, but Monet's got the setup from himself on the high ground. The Seraph shooter comes in. Tomato. He's got Song in one second. He's also got still two minutes left on the Aegis, so he'll probably let the Aegis burn out the once. See Monet building up the stacks, considers turning towards Seb, but it will respect the fact that Tomato's respawning. Tomato turns with a quick control and silence onto JT. Seb dies back in. He's got the Supernova. The song's in place, but good damage coming in from the Kisses here from X Nova off to the side. It isn't enough to kill Tomato off though immediately. Still, they continue to look to chase him, but the Dragon Tail Stun catches on Tomato. Tomato, he turns back in. He's got the silence in the net to follow up to the Dragon Tail Stun, and it allows them to take down Mone and maybe get more JT. Well, he's lucky his BKB's come back off cooldown. It's enough to allow him to TP out at this one once again. So at least JT is able to save himself. But uh, just able to dance around the fight. The fact they had that Aegis, Tomato was ready with round two. And unfortunately for Money on the Slark, he was not. They just didn't have enough damage. And it might also boil down to the fact that I didn't really catch this, but Hoodwink has a full on Manta. Radiance bottom tower is Wait, I mean, if he had like a Gleipnir or anything like this, it could have been that additional control and damage. And now Nova, he has a TP, but yeah. Oh no, he doesn't actually on cooldown, sorry. But yeah, so G2IG, they, they take the, the first life of the Naga Siren and they just wish they had a little bit more. And Mane, he also kind of blunders his aggression there. He tries to jump further for the Naga Siren using his Dark Pat, but then he has no defensive tools to then survive the, the Dragon Tail and the turnaround. Fights once again, OG, are making it so difficult for G2IG to position accordingly. In doing so, it's like, it feels like Slark and Kotal are always on like the polar opposites of the fight. And that, that alone is making it so hard for them to really do some damage. And... Radiance top tower is under attack. I'm not sure what the next move is going to be. I mean, it feels that OG with this lead, they can look to play this set one out pretty slowly and safely. Now this, every minute that passes with the amount of farm that Tomato and BZM are getting, it's it's going to be just incredibly obnoxious for, for G2IG to try and defend against this constant pressure of the Naga illusions and the DK illusions, just pushing down their lanes. It's some of the feel for your story it's playing too. Like any <laughs> illusion warfare against you is just... Yeah. It's the worst. <laughs> Aboka. Uh, he's got that Manta. Will help him against the net, won't help him against the silence. As it comes in afterwards, there is going to be the, the Shroud popped down here by Moni in attempts to save him, but it won't. Baboka still goes down. Supernova off from the side. They've got the setup from the song to make sure that nothing stops the Supernova. The timing's there. They've taken, taken out the two of them, and now they can look to get Monet and JT. JT's going to try for the TP out. Once again, lucky to get out of there. Mone also able to somehow live with the pounces, but BZM's going to try and chase on the dragon tail comes in toss four from ari it's going to be Monet down again no buyback on him he's out for a minute nothing to say also out they'll tap out they've had enough gg is called og coming in hot here to start off this group stage they'll take the 2-0 against g2ig